Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, welcome to my presentation. And it's my pleasure to be here today and giving this presentation. Basically, uh, this is the outline of the presentation. I'll be giving some introductory comments and then I'll, I'll uh, talk about the objective of the paper, then econometric model, data, results, and then the, finally I'll talk about the conclusions. You see, uh, Bangladesh is a uh, natural disaster porn country and, and it's affected by climate change uh, related disasters. And natural disaster has got, uh, you know, impact on poverty, it increases poverty, as well as deprivation of affected areas. And you know, if you look at the map of Bangladesh, southern part is mostly affected by natural disasters. and the thing is that when a natural disaster happens, the negative impacts are not equal to all households. And you see, uh, and these negative impacts are disproportionately uh, distributed uh, among the households. And in terms of if we talk about the negative uh, losses of assets, and real, it, 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 we can see that the losses of assets are relatively longer term and it's more acute for uh, people belonging to the lower strata of the society. And compared to the rich people, are naked, the poor people are uh, severely affected. And the thing is that due to natural disasters, you know, so we have been actually experimenting some development uh, innovations or projects in the areas of natural disasters. The thing is that when a household goes above the poverty line, and whenever a natural disaster happens, immediately due to that natural disaster, those households which have already crossed the poverty line, they come back below, go back below, to, below the poverty line again due to natural disaster. And some of them, due to this natural disaster, they fall into uh, poverty traps for a longer period of time, and it becomes very difficult for them to uh, come out of the trap uh, uh, in a short in a shorter term. And the thing is that you know if we talk about the recovering the losses of assets for these households, you know the extent of recovery depends on on the access to local markets by these households. Okay, especially we are talking about the financial markets. And that thing is that in a country or in an economy where uh, you have got markets are full and complete and all households are uh, have, have the same uh, level of access to the uh, uh, markets. But the thing is that in a country like Bangladesh where markets are not complete or uh, perfect, so all households do not have got the same access to the markets, especially uh, to the financial markets. And we know that in a country like Bangladesh where 40% uh, households do not have any land asset. So these households do not have the capacity to provide with some collateral to the financial institutions to get loans from the formal sector financial institutions. So ultimately due to these reasons, they have to rely on the informal sources of uh, credit. And considering this limitation of the formal sector financial institutions, you see 30 years back, uh, Professor Yunus uh, started microcredit programs in Bangladesh you know, through establishing Grameen Bank. And now it has become a popular model all over the world. So ultimately, uh, the point is that access to credit is very important to households. And from the literature on access to credit, we know that access to credit has got positive impact on well-being. Uh, it has got negative impact on poverty. And uh, it has got po positive impact on entrepreneurship as well. And we know that Access to credit has got a gender dimension. Women, women are more discriminated, uh, discriminated compared to male members in the society. And the thing is that uh, whenever look at the literature on the uh, impact of access to credit on the uh, recovery of disaster losses, uh, we don't see that much things in the literature. Only one paper is available so far I know, that is Carter et al, 2007. He looked at the uh, impact of access to credit on uh, 
uh, household losses which are related to only assets. That means uh, this paper doesn't uh, take into consideration the non-asset losses. Okay. So considering um, uh, this limitation or this gap in the literature, uh, this, pa this paper intends to examine how financial markets institu market institutions, formal as well as informal, help households in rural areas of Bangladesh in recovering total, total asset and non-asset losses that income from natural, disaster, natural disasters. Okay, these are the three uh, economic models that we have. In the first model, if you look at that, you know, dependent variable is mitigation, the extent of mitigation or extent of disaster loss recovery um, by the households. And on the right-hand side of the equation, you see that the first one is excess, and which is actually a dummy variable, which denotes that uh, uh, it takes one if household has got an access to uh, a financial mark, mark to, a, to credit or zero otherwise. In the second model, on the right-hand side, we have got two uh, variables, important, and, and apart from the excess, we have got some other control variables like, you know, household, household level uh, control variables and village level control variables, okay. In the second equation, if you look at that, two, the most two important uh, independent variables are loans and then um, square loan. That means loans, that's in, 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 this, in this variable, we are uh, taking the, putting total amount of current loan of the household uh, as an independent variable, and we have got like a square loan to see the nonlinearity in the relationship between loan and uh, extent of disaster loss recovery. And then in third equation, we have put uh, loans from different sources, commercial bank, microfinance, uh, community-based organizations, and then uh, other informal organizations, friends and families, family members, and then suppliers get it as well. Okay, so data that I have got for this paper from a survey of uh, 2,860 uh, households from 140 villages in different parts of the country. And we have actually, in, during the survey, we divided the whole country into three disaster areas. One uh, particularly uh, flood torn flood -torn areas, then uh, second one cyclone, third one is uh, desertification. So these are the three uh, um, uh, climate uh, change related uh, uh, areas we have uh, uh, identified, we identified during the data collection. And besides um, information on natural disaster loss as well as access to KD, we also collected detailed information at the household level as well as at the village level during the survey. So these are the uh, summary statistics of important uh, um, uh, independent as well as dependent variables. Um, if you look at the first, second row, is that's the mitigation, that is dependent variable, extent of household disaster loss mitigation. And we have found that on an average, households were able to recover 26% uh, of their losses um, uh, during that time, at the time of data collection. And then access, that means 39% households had access to credit, uh, to any sources of uh, credit. And then loan, total amount of loan, average loan size was uh, 8,936 uh, taka, it's in Bangladeshi taka. If you convert that into dollars, it's going to be like $110 uh, roughly. Then uh, loan, Amount, average loan amount from commercial banks, 2,494 taka. And then from my, microfinance institutions, only 785 is around $10. From community-based organization, it was 282 taka. From other NGOs, you know, 2,713. From money lenders, informal money lenders, 1,618. From friends and families, 761. And from suppliers, uh, 282 taka. Now we, on table one, you can see that uh, extent of disaster loss compared to uh, non-land household assets. Uh, we divide all the, all the households into three categories, hardcore poor, poor, non-poor. For hardcore poor, you see that 
total non-land, average total non-land non assets um, were 41,485, roughly $600, $600 around. And then loss was 23,548, and loss was uh, in, in dollars, 3,341. And you can see that the loss was like 50, 57% of the total assets they lost due to a natural disaster. And for poor household, this uh, percentage of loss reduces to 48%. And for non-poor, it is 22%. So you can see that it, the natural disaster uh, affects households disproportionately. Poor households are more vulnerable, and their, their extent of loss is higher than, than uh, richer households. Then if we look at the uh, loss recovery compared to total loss, then um, total loss, over average loss recovery was 4,175 taka, which was 18% of the total loss for uh, hardcore poor. For poor households, the loss recovery was 17%, and for non-poor, it was 15%. So, you see, uh, from the even loss recovery perspective, um, uh, hardcore poor households um, were not in a better position. Okay, although they are relatively they had a, a little bit higher recovery, but if you look at their total assets and the loss and the recovery, so they have actually lost a significant amount of their uh, non-land assets due to. Uh, 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 natural disaster and they couldn't be able to recover uh, those uh, losses uh, through any means. Now, if we look at um, uh, this disaster loss recovery uh, in terms of geographical distribution, in terms of disaster, so here we have divided all the areas into three, three cyclone area, flood area, and we have also considered some areas as non-disaster areas where the, the extent of flood or cyclone was not that severe, but still they had, got, they had some affected households. Uh, if you, you can see from the table that the recovery in the non-disaster area was higher, 22%, and in flood areas, recovery was 19%, and cyclone areas, uh, it was 15%. Now we come to the uh, results. I have, been, I have reported only uh, results of the important variables. I have been reported uh, the results of other variables. These, are, these results are given in the paper. If you want to look at, you can see it from there. If you look at the excess uh, uh, variable, it's, it, you can see that from the first model, excess is significant. That means access to credit significantly help households in recovering their losses. Then if we look at the second model, loan and loan square, that means quadrant term of the loan, and from the results we can see that there is a non-linearity in the relationship. It, 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 with the increase in the loan, the, the uh, reduction in the loss reduce, is, is, is goes up, and then it, it, it reduces. So there is a non-linearity in the uh, relationship. Then the interesting result coming from the uh, loans from different sources. If you look at the uh, loan from the commercial bank, it's, it's negatively related with the extent of loss recovery. From microfinance source, this is positive. From Community-based organizations, this is significant. From other NGOs, this is significant. From money lender, this is also significant. But family, friends, it was positive, not significant. From suppliers, it was positive, not significant. So what is the main policy, actually, uh, thing that is coming from these results? That is that, you know, the former sector financial institutions are not helping uh, households in recovering the losses. And the results is actually logical in the sense that in terms of getting a loan from a commercial bank, from a formal sector institution, is very lengthy, it's cumbersome, time consuming. So immediately after a disaster, households do not have access to formal sector institution. 
due to collateral, due to this procedural thing. And that's why the, what is the main the conclusion that is coming that access to credit is important in terms of recovering losses and there is a non-linearity in, 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 in the relationship between access to credit and the extent of loss recovery. And then the former sector institutions are not helping. And the government needs to do something uh, to help households in recovering losses through giving them credit from the former sector institution as it is important for them that interest rate in the former sector is lower than the interest rate in the informal sector. And government needs to do something to, they need to actually uh, reduce the cumbersome procedures in getting uh, loans for the households as well as it should be available to everybody. So these are the findings from my paper. Thank you.